Hey guys, welcome to Hope Rescue Podcast. It's Tim and Kimberly Scott, and we're excited to be with you today. We've had a great week. Hope you have too. And uh, it's a gorgeous, sunny San Diego day today where we are. It is beautiful. It's yeah. a little warm. They said, though, we might have monsoons coming through, so that's interesting. All that means is that it's going to be warm and rainy. And sticky, a little and bit sticky. Yeah, yeah we're not going like to whine Texas. about it, though. It's going to turn into Texas here in a minute. <laughs> we're not going to whine about it, because yeah. San Diegans are famous for like living in the most lovely climate, but still, like it gets a little too high up um, in temperature, and we start whining, and if it gets a little too cold, we start whining, because we're spoiled. Hey, I'll go ahead and whine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's right. My- that's my deal. So we, uh, speaking of balanced temperatures, we are in a series about balance. Balancing the life. Today we're on part five. Yeah, so we've been talking about these eight uh, categories of balanced life. And we use this metaphor, say this every time uh, for the last few uh, episodes. And that is, there's think of your life as a wheel that has spokes that go from the hub out to make that wheel completely round and balanced. Mm-hmm. And those categories that we're dealing with, mind, emotions, spirit, and body, that's where we left off last time, last week. And then this week, we're on to the next one. Number five is social life, balancing your social life. And then next week, we're going to talk about balancing your financial life. And then the final two are purpose balancing your career home all of that and then uh finally your home life your your romantic life so anyway those eight spokes really create this balanced life there are probably some other categories that are important but those are the ones we chose yeah. and it's been interesting to go through this and here we are on on uh, our social life think about uh how much it is important to be well connected. I just started reading um, Johan. Uh, Johan. I was going to say, say probably Johan. Johan. <laughs> Johan. It's spelled Johan. You can call him Joe. <laughs> uh, Harry is his last name, uh-huh. and he wrote a book on connections and addiction, hmm. and how absolutely important it is uh, to have connections, and that's the biggest. Thing that all addicts of every, whether it's substance abuse, abuse, mm-hmm. pornography, sexual addiction, whatever addiction it might right. be, whether it doesn't need to be substance, any kind of mental hmm. addiction, it has to do with deficit in connections. Oh, that's good. And he wrote a book about this. I saw, we were just talking about TED Talks a minute ago before we got on the podcast and uh, I saw a TED Talk of his and, and I never... I didn't know he wrote this book Hmm. and I heard him being interviewed the other day. So I thought I'd order. So I have it. I've just started it. It's really fascinating. And some of you think, well, my social life is not important as my spiritual life. And yet Jesus said, Hmm. love the Lord, your God. Here's the two, the greatest commandment is this, love the Lord, your God with all your heart, soul, and might. Mm -hmm. And the second is like unto it love your neighbor as yourself. yourself. So yeah. that whole issue of connecting with God in love and connecting with others in mm-hmm. love, that is our who we are. We right. are social beings. After Adam was created, he said, it's not good that man be alone. We need connection. Right. And we've so seen, social the, life we've is seen the devastation that isolation can bring starting in 2020, the, the devastating effect on with uh, oh. and including addiction, of course, but mental health it's issues, sky high yeah, right, right, suicide, right. So that's a uh, you know just another poignant reminder of how important it is to have uh, some balance with a social life. And we're going to yeah. define that because I think there's a lot of people who are like, well, I'm not very social, and or you know, I'm I'm kind of a loner. And you know what? We, God wired us a certain it's way. A, it's okay to it's be It's okay. A loner. Yes, yeah. and that's we're what we're going to break yeah. that down. Yeah, absolutely. But but think about this: that every single person you know is social they Mm -hmm. need connection Mm -hmm. and when we're so broken that we can't connect with other people we really need that help so in in the book i wrote called breathe um i talk about you know anxiety depression negative emotions but depression one of the things that is crucial in steps toward getting over depression 
is to connect with other people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you don't connect with other people, you're going to remain in that depression and, and even learning to share that depression or anxiety. So these negative emotions are really addressed by that. But I know you don't like to plug your own stuff, but you should give the way that people can go ahead and get a hold of that yeah, book. You can go to our website. Many of you who listen to this already know our website. It's hoperescuepodcast.org. Mm -hmm. Hoperescuepodcast.org. And uh, it will pop up on the screen um, and uh, you'll be able to purchase it right there. Um, it's, it's really important. Another thing, and by the way, we don't talk about this very often, but, uh, if you would like to support our, um, podcast, uh, then we'd it, love that we, we would, <laughs> we, we could use the help. That'd be uh, awesome. Uh, we, we do need the financial help this season. God has been good to us mm -hmm. and faithful to us. But, uh, if you feel like you would like to invest in our podcast, it'd be great. By the way, starting the 17th. So it's about a week away. Um, the 17th is going to be the starting of our, uh, Bible study once again on Wednesday nights and it'll be at 6 30 PM and it'll be live streamed. Uh, we'll give you more information about that, but also it's archived those, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's not a podcast. It's a, actually, a an expository uh, approach to uh, biblical study. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through the book of James. I'm going to approach that. Some of you have asked me this, and I'm going to approach this not just expositorily, but I'm also going to create a message around it. So mm -hmm. I think it's going to have, you know, for people that don't want to go um, real academic, I think yeah. it will have an appeal across the board. Oh, it's going to be awesome. So yeah. I lost my point. I, I'll get us back. So okay. we were talking about balance in our social life. And uh, Tim and I often talk about, there's no rule for this, but how if you could intentionally intimately to, you know, that's a weird word for men, but connect, have a connection with at least three friends I don't think and that's no a more than, yeah, men. no, I yeah, I know some yeah. guys trip out over that stuff, yeah. but, uh, three friends would be the challenge. And because we, t we talked about in the past that having too many is actually, uh, difficult to maintain and you don't really have intimacy with more than yeah. a, a small number, uh, because those relationships require a, an equal investment. And there's only so much of us that have a margin to be able to invest to that degree outside of family relationships. But there's this great passage in Proverbs 18 verse 24. And it says this, a man may of many companions may come to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And I love that because we always define success socially as having all the friends and all the followers, right? Like right. that's kind of the world we're in. And, and in reality, you and I both know, and our audience knows that uh, those aren't real friends, but it looks, it's a measure of success. Like you socially arrived to some degree, but yeah. there's no balance in that. If your whole world is pursuing followers and um, you know, a, a, a group around you, but you're missing those three, then you're completely out of balance in your social yeah. life. And there's nothing wrong, obviously. We, we're, we're all for like having followers and having influence, but uh, your focus needs to be on having at least three people around you that know you well, that love you deeply and are committed to a relationship with you that um, for the long haul. Yeah, I, 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 the meaning of that verse, a man with too many friends will be broken into pieces. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of a really taking it from the root of that uh, proverb. Indiscriminately chose, cho chosen friend may uh, be trouble, but a genuine friend sticks with you yeah. through everything. So if you have one friend, you've got, you are rich. Yeah. If you've got three friends, you're doing great. And as I said a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago, if you have 20 friends, you don't. You don't, yeah. <laughs> you just simply can't have that level of connection. And you can have acquaintances, mm -hmm. you can have friendships, but when we're talking about intimate friendship, right. and that's really important. I like to think of this of it like this. Like you're the center, you know, of your social I influence. I like to think of me being and the then, center and then you of have everything. Circles <laughs> outside of that that are of the people that are closest to you. Yeah. And um, so the ones that are closest to you obviously ideally would be your your spouse and family. That's where your your greatest um, influence needs to be. And outside of that, there's a circle of friends. That would be the three or you know, or few outside 
outside of that. And as the, the circle grows bigger, obviously, they are friends. So we don't want to minimize right. the fact that you have friends of more than 20, but they aren't the kind of friends we're talking about. Yeah, and I think it's important to call people that you're friendly with and that you know pretty well, you know their family, you know their issues, you know their life and so forth, yeah. to call them friends. Right. I think that's important to call them friends. Right. And so I don't mean to minimize those friendships, mm -hmm. but I, I like what you said, that intimate right. friendship, uh, you know, you have a few people, my, you know, and it may be in your family. Uh, if it is, you, you know, you need to go outside your family um, yeah, too. We're but, talking about outside yeah, for this. Yeah. For but, this group, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, there are people in your life that you need to be, uh, connected mm -hmm. with outside of your family. They can be a, more objective and so forth. Right. So I uh, want to talk about we, anytime you talk about, um, you know, social balance or balancing your social life, you need to talk about, uh, something that's very been popularized, maybe a little misunderstood, but that is social intelligence or social IQ. Uh, Ephesians 4, 1 says this, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, listen to these words, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling. Uh, and think about this. this every, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you've been called to this. And this is the calling. With all humility, mm. gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love. That's your calling. Mm -hmm. He goes on to explain in that verse, the calling is to develop and defend the unity of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So that's our calling is unity, but it takes humility, gentleness, patience, and bearing with. And I actually looked up and I won't go too deep because we got so much to go over, but uh, the word humility, I think we know that it's that ability to see yourself where you actually fit and mm -hmm. to value other people properly. Mm -hmm. uh, gentleness means that you're not affected by people's behavior, even if you think it's wrong or whatever. You just mm -hmm. don't you don't worry about that. You mm -hmm. don't personalize their behavior. Patience means you take a long time before being provoked. Acting, and, reacting. And here's the tough one. Bearing with one another. It literally yeah. means to put up with each other's idiosyncrasies. Yeah. <laughs> My wife does that pretty well. Uh, I'm not as I'm not as good at that. Yeah, you're great. But yeah, yeah. thank you. There you go. That's, <laughs> we'll go with that. You're awesome. But the reality is that uh, when you are in an intimate relationship, and it's a really important there are things that that person is going to do that bug you. Yes, especially right? in an intimate re relationship. I thought you were going to say especially you. No, Tim. I no. just know because that you you have uh, you know the stuff. You have a view that's so so up close, and the truth is, we are all kind of born to just be selfish, and we see you know we, we think through our own uh, perspective and how things should be done and why, and then you you allow another in, uh, human into that space of intimacy, and they're just not going to do things the way you do it. So yeah. that that could tend to bug you, you know, yeah. a little or a lot. So. Yeah, well, we, we kind of broke this. When we talk about social intelligence, those are kind of the values, you know, humility, gentleness, patience, forbearance. But we came up with three things. That is social rules, listening for cues, mm -hmm. and how to, and finally to lean into love. So let's kind of start with that social rules. So we're, social rules would be, uh, it might seem simplistic, but very important uh, in close relationships would be respect for privacy, for instance. Okay, who does that? Yeah. so yeah, Most people do that. I, I think so, but yes and no. It depends how you're raised. I think a lot of, of people, uh, you know, in younger generations who've been kind of raising themselves without parents on site, you don't, you, get, you don't get a lot of fundamentals these days. So it's, it's good to talk about it. Yeah, so when you look at social media, you do not have the idea that what you're doing is private. Mm-hmm. You are posting right. where you are. It always drives me crazy when I see mm -hmm. people that are overseas and they're saying, ah, we're in Rome. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and your house is available to rob? Right. Is it's that what we're talking definitely about? Definitely a no-no right you now. Know, to you do said, that. we're in Rome and this really big security guard is watching our house. Yeah. He's well-armed <laughs> with a bazooka dog. and a bunch of dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that, but privacy really needs to be, you know, the expectation of privacy. Uh, we just watched, uh, or, or I did, I don't, I don't remember who watched this with me, uh, a thing on um, women that have been exposed 
uh, for they had took pictures of himself topless mm-hmm. or whatever, and they uh, it's it's called the the most hated man in America or on the huh. internet, and it was a guy that was literally hacking into women's private computers oh, yeah. and exposing them on the internet mm-hmm. on his website. And finally, they were shut down, sued. Yeah. They went to the wrong person. The mother was a lawyer, and the father was a lawyer, Good. and they slammed this guy. And he actually went to prison. Good, yeah. But that, but when you post on social media, do not expect that that's private. Right. You know, right. we know you had two eggs and bacon <laughs> and that and that bagel with cream cheese. Okay, you wanted us to know. We know, and then we also know that your dog in the background is taking a poo poo because <laughs> you didn't notice that. <laughs> that's it a. It, it can, can happen. happen. <laughs> so privacy. Yeah, right. Rules. The second thing would be regarding social rules in, in um, friendship is respect for boundaries. We've heard a lot about boundaries, thankfully, in the last, oh gosh, probably 15, 20 years yeah. even. But um, but it's now something that even with younger generations, that's thrown out there a lot. And it's important because I think that um, in the past... Uh, that was seen as being closed off of self at being selfish, um, or you, you know, especially in regards to, uh, having boundaries, um, in your life for sometimes toxic family members, that would never be a, a conversation, you know, for our parents when they were growing mm-hmm. up, you don't do that. You just right. suck it up. It didn't matter if you had an uncle that was crossing a line and, uh, you know, yeah. being inappropriate with your daughter, any weird stuff like that. But boundaries is talked about a lot now, and I'm really grateful for that. They're tough. Um, to, to lay down and even more difficult to hold to, but boy, is the payoff a benefit. Yeah, but <laughs> when we talk about social rules, you look at people's boundaries, you find out what they are, right. you know, you don't just show up at somebody's door right. in mm-hmm. 2022, like we did in 1957. Exactly. You know, it's a different yeah. world we live in. It is. And so you, you have to have that kind of a, a mm-hmm. social awareness. Right. What's right. the next one? Respect for time. Oh so gosh, we're trying to do that so with important. you right now. So we, yeah. so we stay within well, we, our limit. We, we stay within our <laughs> limits too, because we have to, but yeah, uh, that's but huge. Think about time. Like when you show up 10 minutes late mm-hmm. for a meeting, what you said to the person is you don't matter. Your time doesn't matter as much as mine. Now there are things that happen. Mm-hmm. The best thing to do when you show up late, if that's an anomaly, that's not something that happens all the time. Right. Don't go in and apologize. Mm-hmm. Go in and thank them for being patient. Right. It's a big difference. And because you un- you're you acknowledging that their time was important and you're also putting it not in the negative, but in the positive. Yeah, that's good. But next time, be on time. Right. <laughs> that's a big deal. And another one is respect for values, having respect for other people's values, which you may not agree with. And one of our big things that we have repeated over and over again through the last uh, several years is that you can love someone well that you disagree with. Yeah. And that, that even if they have values that, that don't align with yours, you can still be respectful of those values mm-hmm. as th- them being theirs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And re- and another one is respect for property. And, you know, like mm-hmm. it always bothers me and I don't know why, but it bothers me that some people that you don't know well, mm-hmm. it's one thing when our kids come over, I always say yeah. that, you know, the kids come over when, when they're before they got married or, you know, they're single and going to college or whatever, they go through our house. Like they've got a shopping cart. <laughs> okay. Then we got, we got toilet paper. Let's see. We got candy. Yep. Uh, we got power bars. Okay. What else do we need? Okay. We got some milk here. We got, we're like the store. And you kind of want them to do it because Absolutely. you want no, them to feel they're, they're it. But when kids. they're married, they got to. We want well, to go to their house and get their stuff. They, okay, so there, there is yes, a certain point where kids shouldn't be doing that anymore. Although we love it that our kids do that to a certain degree because you love being uh, a provider as a parent. It's different if it's the kids' friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or, or or somebody you don't know, right. somebody coming in. Like I, we, my brother-in-law, Kimberly's brother. His, yeah. I, I don't know if I, well, I could say that. the next door neighbor, he had a tarp oh. in his yard. Well, this happened to my brother. This yes. happened to your brother. His and his na- neighbor, his, his neighbor just 
took it. Yeah, he, he had a tarp in his side yard. His neighbor could see from upstairs Went over his fence. that he had a tarp, a new one folded up. Went, this is what's funny. He went and took the tarp. They have it on the the film because everybody's yards are filmed now that he did that. Yeah. They didn't confront him, but within about three days, there was a new tarp replaced in that same spot, and they had used that tarp. Apparently, they needed one right away to cover their boat, but yeah. without asking, but they replaced it, you know? Yeah. So there was a little respect yeah. in there somewhere, but yeah. that's a, you know, that's the a respect for property. The neighbor's issues. kids, you know, kick a ball over, and they they just yeah. don't say anything, and I I go, what, man, I get, where'd we get this ball? And she goes, is there, do you guys have a soccer ball over there? And I go, I think we have about 10. Which one do you want? All of them? Anyway. So, so this so. kind of goes along with the whole thing about values and, and marries with that, but someone's uh, respect for someone's lifestyle choices. And again, uh, uh, with the same answer, you, you may not agree with it. You can disagree with their lifestyle choices and their values, but it doesn't mean you can't love them well and be, be a good friend. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And then, so that's the first thing, you know, really respecting those social rules. But then the second one is what? Listening for cues. So, yeah. Yeah. So what you want to do is learn what drives those with whom you are interacting. And this is really important. If you want to know someone well, it's all about the listening and not just listening, but asking, engaging questions around the things that they they care about, you know, that they're passionate about, the things that bother them, their hearts, um, and lead with questions to give them a platform that they feel safe in being able to process those things. That creates intimacy in, in friendship you know, and so, social connection. Yeah, so there's all these rules that we need to follow, but probably the most important rule, and we've kind of mentioned it earlier, is lean into love. Mm-hmm. Uh, when people are inappropriate, uh, with you, you need to love them. When people are doing amazing things for you, you need to love them. When people fail, you need to love them. W- one of the most important social rules is, and, and we read this in this scripture, with all humility, gentleness, mm-hmm. patience, bearing with one another. All of that is to say, my love for you is not about me. Right. It, it's a, it's about you. I'm going to lean into love for your sake. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're going to transition here, and this is a little dangerous because we, we don't have, have much time. time. But I want to talk about uh, just briefly what uh, what we call personality. You know what I think what, what we should do is probably do a podcast on this. Let's do And we'll do yeah. this at the end. But so let's just talk about what, you know, different uh, social personalities. Yeah. When, when you talk about personality styles uh the three main ones used to be just extrovert introvert Mm -hmm. but but then there came is actually quite a long time ago there was this word ambivert Mm -hmm. which was coined and uh i i thought it was really really resonated for you no well it did but it, it was i just became aware of it in the last say 10 years maybe 12 years but I, I want to talk about, we want to talk about uh, that. And I think it would be best if after we finish this series, we yeah. come back. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll do that. I think it'll be in, but I want to do this just because we've got a couple of minutes here to real quickly talk about some of the misconceptions because we're talking about social mm-hmm. uh, balance. Some of the misconceptions about extroverts and introverts. Okay, let's just define real quick those three so they understand okay. where we're going. Introverts are energized by time alone. Extroverts typically are energized by social time. And ambiverts, which is a term some of you may not have heard of, are energized by purpose and time. Yeah, so they so, can they can they may look extroverted, but they they tend to lean more introverted. But if there's purpose involved, they will become an extrovert. So to put some practical legs on that, and an introvert would be somebody that, when they are needing to be recharged, mm-hmm. they go by them they go alone. Yeah. An extrovert, when they want to be recharged, they connect with yeah. somebody or yeah. a group of people. Mm-hmm. When an ambivert wants to be recharged. 
they need to find purpose right. and it could be in being alone or being with somebody mm-hmm. and uh so so let's uh, go we'll over the misconceptions yeah, real we'll quick. go over the misconceptions leave it there and then uh, you know after this series is up in about three or four weeks pick it up we'll come back okay so here here's the first one and we'll just take turns going through these Extrover- extroverts this is a misconception about extroverts extroverts are more confident than introverts not I always true. thought yeah, that because yeah. I leaned a little more introverted mm-hmm. and I thought, boy, that guy is so confident, you know, mm-hmm. and people think that about you though, and would never guess you're an introvert. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's because I'm an <laughs> it's ambivert. A, it's a misconception. Yeah. And these, they see my purpose drive. Mm-hmm. We can get into that yeah. when we get into this uh, later. Another one is introverts don't care for people. That's not necessarily true. Another is introverts are... Wait, wait, wait. just camp on that because we got a minute. Introverts don't care for people. That misconception is a real problem because if you're an introvert Mm -hmm. and people uh, allege that you don't love or care, you're like, wait a minute, I do love and I do care. I energize by myself, Mm -hmm. but I do care for people. Mm -hmm. And maybe I don't have 50 people I connect with at a party, but I do care about people. And, um, I know <laughs> I was at a party at our son-in-law's father's house. It was actually, uh, uh, I don't remember what the party, a wedding thing or something. I don't know. Anyway. Um, and it was, uh, we were at, uh, Devin's dad's house Oh yeah. and I'm kind of standing back just watching the show, you know, I'm not really connecting. Yeah. I did connect with people. I'd go up to a few, but I'm more, but I do love people and I do care about of people. Of course, yeah. And if I thought I was hurting somebody. But you were being comfortable in that setting in right. your natural temperament, right. which is as an ambivert. Yeah. Another misconception is introverts are fearful of people. Not necessarily true. That extroverts are show-offs. Not necessarily true. Yeah, they appear to be show-offs right. just because they're. The confidence uh, level. Yeah, that yeah. confidence mm-hmm. level. Inter- extroverts don't like being alone. Mm-hmm. That's not true either. That's not uh, true. Extroverts, yeah. like, I always thought of you as more extroverted I than am. I am. Uh, you're definitely more social than mm-hmm. I am. But I think you become less extroverted the more Absolutely. you're around. Absolutely. I'm dragging you into the darkness. No, I think that part of that comes from age and uh, seasons of life. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean you, you, go, you don't get labeled something and stay at the rest of your life if you're changing and growing and evolving and all that. So Here's, here's one that is really interesting, a misconception about extroverts mm-hmm. and introverts. Public speakers are always extroverts. Oh my gosh, no. Gosh, I, we know pastors that are not naturally extroverted and mm. they have massive influence yes absolutely. i'm thinking of a couple right now it's not yep. for me to say that but yeah. it's really interesting what's yep. the next one introverts don't have friends well we know that's not true <laughs> they have probably some of the best friendships because they're very intentional with how they spend their time that's right mm-hmm. and then last and we we'll, again <laughs> we'll come back to this in a few weeks but Introverts are shy. Mm-hmm. See, shyness, now there's different different definitions for shy, but shyness is usually fear-based, mm-hmm. and whereas introversion is about social drive. In other words, when you're introverted, it's it's about you're withdrawing to energize, and then you once recharged, you can move back into a social setting. Mm-hmm. But somebody who's shy is really hampered by the fear of connecting mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. other people. Now, there's ways to overcome that, but that's a different social issue. Mm-hmm. But, oh, there's so much more we I want know. to we'll, share we'll about this, but continued. we're out of time. <laughs> so what we'll do is move on to our next uh, uh, topic on this, uh, which is uh, dealing with our finances. Mm-hmm. We'll deal with that next week. And then in a few weeks, we'll come back and deal with this. Okay. (laughs) So uh, again, if you would like to get a hold of that book, uh, Breathe, Overcoming Anxiety, Depression, and Negative Emotions. Uh, I wrote that book for you. If that's your issue or you know someone, you can get it at Mm -hmm. hoperescuepodcast.org. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Uh, We're always so grateful that you listen. And I hope you have an amazing week. We'll come back next week and hit this topic again.